Hey guys, um, so today we're going to talk about something called complex trinomial factoring. Okay, um, and what I want to do is I want to remind you of what we called simple trinomial factoring. Okay, so this one's called complex trinomial factoring. I want to remind you of what we call simple trinomial factoring. Okay, so simple trinomial factoring was, I uh, remember the key was that here we had to start with just an x squared, and that allowed us to factor this into something starting with an x times starting something starting with an x, right? And then we could decide what happens here based on this number, right? So they had to multiply to six, so it could be one times six, it could be two times three, but they also had to add to five. So we knew that this one would have to be two and three, right? So that was simple trinomial factoring. Um, now what we have to deal with is the fact that sometimes it doesn't start with just an x, but it starts with a 2x squared, okay? So that's going to be our deal today. Um, and what I want to do is first define what a complex trinomial is, okay? So a complex trinomial is a trinomial which starts with a number other than one or with a coefficient that's not equal to one. Okay, so an example would be 2x squared minus 5x plus 3. Okay, so this is a complex trinomial. Okay, um, an example that you've already seen for example, is 3x squared minus 6x plus 9, okay? So this is complex. So this is a complex trinomial, okay? But you can factor out the 3, and you get x squared minus 2x plus 3, and all of a sudden this becomes simple, okay? So the first thing that we should always look for is, can we turn a complex trinomial into a simple one and then proceed from there? Okay, that's the easiest way to go. Um, but in, today we're going to investigate cases where we can't do that. Okay? So we are trying to factor 2x squared plus 11x plus 15. Okay, so there's no common factor. Okay? It starts with something other than 1. Okay? So the method that we're going to use here is basically trial and error, okay? So I really wanna write that down because I want you to understand that it's okay in math to sometimes just guess your answers and check them, okay? So here, now we're not just gonna try anything, like I'm not gonna try 8x and 5x here, because 8 times 5 is 40, and here I have a 2, right? So that doesn't make sense. So let's get rid of these guesses, because they're kind of silly. Okay? But what I do want to guess is I know that one of these has to be a 2x, and one of them has to be an x, right? Because now these multiply to 2x squared, right? So that's taken care of. Okay? Now the numbers here have to multiply to 15, okay? And in the past, they had to add to 11, okay? Now, since they had to, they had to add to 11 because we would do x times this number and x times this number, so we get this many x's and this many x's. But because of that too, it makes it problematic, okay? Because, so say I, well, there are no numbers that multiply to 15 and add to 11, first of all, okay? But let's try, for example, 3 and 5, okay? So 3 and 5 add to 8, okay? But when I expand the 2x times 5, so I've got 2x times x, that's 2x squared, okay? Then I've got 2x times 5, that's 10x, plus... 3 times x, right? So 2x times 5 is 10x, 3x, OK? 
Okay, so this is 13x. Okay, and then I get my 3 times 5 is 15. Okay, so this is just a guess. And this is the check. Okay, um, so when I simplify this, I get plus 13x. Okay, so that, so this is 11x, this is 13x, so obviously this is wrong. Okay, so you see how these two numbers adding up to 8 now no longer has bearing on how many x's we get because we're actually doubling one of the numbers. Okay, and if this was a 3, then we'd be tripling one of the numbers. Okay, so this guess didn't work. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try another guess. Okay. So I'm going to try 2x, and now instead of having the 5 here, I'm going to try the 5 here. Okay, and now here's my check. So 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times 3 is 6x. 5 times x is 5x. And 5 times 3 is 15. Okay, so this is 2x squared plus 11x plus 15. Well, that happens to be the right answer. Okay, so therefore, 2x plus 5 and x plus 3 are the factors. Okay, so you don't have to write this out, but do circle the right answer or something. Okay, now um, what I'm going to do is I am actually going to do this question again, but I'm going to use a guess and check method that's going to make it a little bit easier for us to um, for us to organize our answers. Okay, so I'm just going to move all that stuff over. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up this little chart. Okay. So there's my little chart. And here, okay, I'm going to put the two things that multiply to 2x squared. Okay. So 2x times x. Okay. So these multiply to 2x squared. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is here, I'm going to put two things that multiply to 15. Now, I'm going to guess. I'm going to try 3 and 5, for example. Right. So this guess is actually the same as this one here. So I know it's going to be wrong. But let's see. See how that 2 multiplies with the 5 and the 3 multiplies with the x? You're actually multiplying from one bracket to another. Okay. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to multiply across and get my 3x. I'm going to multiply across and get my 10x. And I want to see if these add up to my middle term. Okay, so these add up to 13x, so that is no good. Okay, so then I'm not discouraged. I just try again. Okay, so this time I'm going to try 2x and x, and I'm going to try the 5 up here and the 3 up here. Okay, so again, I'll cross multiply, so from one bracket to the other, so that's 5x. One more bracket to the other, that's 6x. These add up to 11x, so that's good because they match my middle term. Okay, so what I get as my answer is 2x squared plus 11x plus 15 is equal to 2x plus 5x plus 3. Okay, so this is called guess and check, and we're going to use these little tables to organize our thoughts. Okay, so let's try another one. Okay, so here's my little table. Okay, the first one. Okay, so I need two things to multiply to 4x squared. So let's try 2x, 2x. Okay, so these multiply to 4x squared. Okay, now here I need two things to multiply to negative 21. Okay, so let's try um, negative 7 and 3. Okay, 
So now let's see if I can get multiplying from one bracket to the other to get these things to add up to 25. Okay, so remember this is equivalent to me trying 2x minus 7, 2x plus 3. So I know 2x times 2x is 4x. I know 7 times 3 is 21. Now, if, now I want to know if 2x times 3, so 2x times 3, plus negative 7 times 2x, so negative 7 times 2x, is equal to 25x. So I'll actually do that. So this is negative 14x. This is 6x. I add them up, and you get negative 8x. Okay, so that's obviously no good. Okay, so let's try another one. So let's try 2x and 2x. And let's try negative uh, 21 and 1. Okay, that could be another option. So I multiply across there, I get negative 42x. Multiply across there, I get 2x. They add up to negative 40x. So obviously, again, no good, okay? So other than being 2x and 2x, it could possibly be 4x and x, okay? So now let's try negative 7 and 3, okay? So x times negative 7 is negative 7x. 4 times 3 is 12x. They add up to 5x, still no good. Okay, so let's try one more. 4x, x. So now let's switch them. Let's try 3 and negative 7. So that's 3x. This is negative 28x. So now we get negative 25x. Okay, so this is actually really close, right? This is negative 25x and this is positive 25x. So what that tells me is that really what I should be doing is I should try 4x and x and negative 3 and 7. So I should try the same numbers, just switch the signs. Because now I get negative 3x here, because you multiply like that. Here you multiply like that, you get 28x. And they actually add up to 25x. Okay? So what that tells us is that here's one factor, so 4x minus 3. Here's the other factor, x plus 7. So this is the factored form of that. And if you want, you can double check. Okay, so if I asked you to check, So that would be 4x squared. This would be 28x. This would be minus 3x. And this would be minus 21. So that's 4x squared plus 25x minus 21, which is good. Okay. So that means that this whole thing factors into that, okay? So that's our guess and check method for factoring, okay? It is going to take a while to get used to because you literally have to guess and check, okay? Um, so that's it. Uh, answer the questions that are attached, and I'll see you guys in class.